Hey there, future scientists. Get ready to explore the amazing world of sound. Sound is everywhere, from the chirping of birds to the roar of a rocket. It's a big part of our lives, and it's time to uncover its secrets. Have you ever wondered how sound is produced or how it reaches our ears? Get ready for an awesome adventure as we dive into the science of sound. We'll learn about vibrations, sound waves, and how our ears help us experience this incredible phenomenon. So, buckle up, put on your thinking caps, and let's crank up the volume on our knowledge of sound. This is going to be epic. Let's kick things off with a simple question. What is sound? The answer is vibration. That's right, sound is all about things moving back and forth really fast. We call this movement vibration. Think about a guitar string. When you pluck it, the string vibrates rapidly. This vibration creates disturbances in the air molecules around it. These disturbances travel outwards like ripples in a pond and eventually reach our ears. But it's not just musical instruments that make sound through vibration. Your vocal cords vibrate when you speak, a drum vibrates when you hit it, and even a car engine vibrates when it's running, producing the sounds we hear. Now that we know sound is made by vibrations, let's find out how it travels. Sound is a fascinating phenomenon that we encounter every day, but have you ever wondered how it reaches your ears? Does it just magically zip through the air to your ears? Or is there more to the story? Not quite. Sound needs a medium to travel like air, water, or even solids. Without these mediums, sound waves wouldn't be able to move from one place to another. Think of it like this. Imagine you drop a pebble in a pond. You see ripples, right? These ripples spread out in circles from where the pebble landed. These ripples are like sound waves, and they need the water to travel. Just as the ripples move through the water, sound waves move through air, water, or solids. Sound waves are similar. They need a substance or medium to carry them along. Without a medium, the vibrations that create sound would have nowhere to go. Sound travels fastest through solids, then liquids, and slowest through gases. This is because the density of the medium affects how quickly the sound waves can move. That's because the molecules in solids are packed tightly together. This tight packing allows the vibrations to transfer more efficiently. This closeness allows the vibrations to pass along more quickly. In contrast, gases have molecules that are spread out, making it harder for the vibrations to travel quickly. Section 4. Can sound exist in a vacuum? This is a question that has puzzled many and is often asked in science classes. The answer is a big fat no. Sound cannot exist in a vacuum. Remember how we talked about sound needing a medium to travel? Sound waves move by vibrating particles in a medium like air, water, or even solid objects. Well, this is where it gets interesting. Without a medium, sound waves have no way to travel. A vacuum is a space where there's absolutely nothing, not even air. It's a complete void, devoid of any particles. So, can sound travel through a vacuum? This is a fundamental question in understanding how sound works. The answer is a resounding no. Sound waves need particles to vibrate and carry them. Since there are no particles in a vacuum to vibrate, sound waves have nothing to carry them. They simply cannot propagate. This means if you were to shout in outer space, no one would hear you, no matter how loud you yelled. Outer space is a perfect example of a vacuum. It would be like trying to swim in an empty pool. There's simply nothing there to carry the waves. Just as you need water to swim, sound needs a medium to travel. Section 5. Decoding Sound. It's all about amplitude, frequency, and time period. Okay, we've covered how sound is made and how it travels, but what makes one sound different from another? Why does a guitar sound different from a piano, even if they're playing the same note? Now, let's break down the key characteristics of sound amplitude, frequency, and time period. These are the building blocks that define every sound we hear. These fancy words might sound intimidating, but they're actually pretty simple to understand. Once you get the hang of them, you'll be able to decode any sound. Amplitude is basically the loudness of a sound. Think of it as the height of the sound wave. The taller the wave, the louder the sound. The bigger the vibrations, the higher the amplitude and the louder the sound. So, when you turn up the volume on your speakers, you're increasing the amplitude. We measure loudness in decibels, or dB. It's a way to quantify how loud or soft a sound is. Frequency, on the other hand, determines the pitch of a sound. It's the number of sound waves that pass a point in one second. Pitch is how high or low a sound seems. A high frequency means a high pitch, and a low frequency means a low pitch. High pitch sounds like a bird's chirp have a high frequency. They have more waves passing a point in a given time. Low pitched sounds, like a tuba, have a low frequency. Fewer waves pass a point in the same amount of time. 
And finally, the time period is the time it takes for one complete sound wave to pass a point. It's the inverse of frequency. It's closely related to frequency. So understanding one helps you understand the other. By mastering these concepts, you'll have a deeper appreciation for the sounds around you.